الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ولن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون نشهد أنه أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على محجة بيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن اقتدى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم بتقوى الله العظيم وأحثكم على طاعته وأحذركم ونفسي الخاطئة وبال عصيانه ومخالفة أمره وأستفتح بالذي هو خير يقول عز وجل اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون ما يأتيهم من ذكر من ربهم محدث إلا استمعوه وهم يلعبون لا هي تنقلوبهم وأسر النجوى الذين ظلموا هل هذا إلا بشر مثلكم أفتأتون السحر وأنتم تبصرون All the praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of all people, the creator of all things, the creator of the whole universe. We bear witness there is no God but Allah, and we bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and his final prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the beginning of Surah Al-Anbiya, declared that the time for people's judgment is coming close. The judgment and accountability of the people has come near. But the people are heedless of that. They are so busy with their lives, distracted by what's going on, and they are basing their thinking on the past, how many hundreds and thousands of years have passed and people and generations have passed. So they assume the future is the same. But we are getting closer and closer to that final day of accountability. At least for each one of us, it doesn't matter how many generations live after us, but we are getting closer and closer to our end of time on this planet. As individuals, we're not going to live for thousands of years. We cannot guarantee during this pandemic that we would live for tomorrow. Hundreds of thousands of people have already died from the pandemic worldwide. Over 8 million people have been infected, 2 million right here in the United States. Here in Florida, in the last 24 hours, we had 1,900 new infections and 29 new deaths, two of them right here in central Florida. If you compare that to the early days of the pandemic in March, when in the whole state you barely had a few dozen people, that's when they imposed a strict lockdown and stay-at-home orders. And the irony that today, when the rate is much higher, when there are tens of thousands of people who have been infected, when every day, as we said in the last 24 hours, nearly 2,000 people were infected, those who were identified and tested, 
to many more who weren't. And today, in the last 24 hours, more people died than the people who were infected in the beginning of March when these restrictions were implemented. Instead, we are going to opening up and relaxing and many people going around as if nothing is going on. Everybody has the impression, because Disney is opening up, SeaWorld is opening up, Universal Studios are opening up, that it's okay. You can go to the restaurants. They open the bars. And that's contributing to the infection. And to understand the infection is, if you have one person infecting one or more people, the infection rate of this disease is about two to two and a half people. And each person will infect two people or two and a half people. That means if it is above one, if each person infected more than one, then the disease will spread in spiraling fashion exponential fashion. The one will infect two, and the two will infect four, and the four, eight, and the eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. One person infected 127 people within less than a month. And in turn, each one of them is infecting other people. People in several states are walking around as if nothing is going on, not even a mask. Millions of people went into the streets protesting and demonstrating in close contact. And many of them didn't wear masks. Didn't take into consideration if the people next to them are sick or not. So suddenly, since Memorial Day till now, in the last two weeks, we had about 14 days out of 15 that the infection rate has spiked, have gone up. Instead of going down, the reasons they said they want to open up because the rates were going down. But the curve is actually going up. And this is not yet the second wave. This is just continuing the first wave of the infection. But it's totally mismanaged and totally not followed. They open the theaters. People want to go to the beach. And that is what Allah is referring to. Allah gives us a sign, a wake-up call, called the COVID-19 pandemic. It's supposed to wake us up to realize what are we doing here on Earth? What is expected of us? What should we focus on? Our faith, our family, our personal development, helping each other. But the reality is most people are heedless of what's going on. They're going back to the same old, running around naked. They are cheating each other fighting over money, fighting for the dunya, for this worldly material things. So nothing has really changed. They didn't learn the lesson from it. And if you compare this pandemic to previous spread of diseases, there will be millions of people who will die before this is over. Early estimates, they say by October we will have over 200,000 people dead in the United States because of this pandemic. This is a serious matter. And this is how Allah sends reminders for us to understand that there is a creator, there is a purpose for our lives, and we need to change our behavior before it's too late. He said, مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ مُحْدَثٍ إِلَّا اسْتَمَعُوهُ وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ Every time a reminder, a wake-up call comes to them, 
They see it, they watch it, but they are playing. How many hurricanes came and did major destruction? Those were warnings too. Big fires in California and the Northwest. Those were reminders. But you have to have a heart to remember. إِنَّ فِي ذَٰلِكَ لَذِكْرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٍ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٍ In that there is a reminder for a person who has a heart to remember, who has a brain to think. But we are distracted with games, literally. 300 million Americans spend several hours a day playing games today. And they feel nothing. There's nothing to worry about. You're wasting the time instead of planning for what you need to do, how to take care of yourself and your family and your community. My brothers and sisters, many politicians are using the tragedy of George Floyd, his death, to distract the population from the pandemic and its economic impact. Many people who rushed to the streets, they came out because they have been bottled in like a soda can for two, three months, and they needed to go out and breathe and shout and scream at somebody. But the question is, what real change is going to happen. Not cosmetic change. If you read the bills that Congress has proposed and police departments across the country have proposed of changes, you'll find that all of this hoopla is not going to change the underlying facts in society. In fact, Black people, African Americans, and colored people in general will be worse off after this crisis than they were before it. In 2008, when the economy crashed and over 5 million people lost their homes, Americans lost $19 trillion that went from poor people who own property to the very rich people who became super rich. This tragedy is much bigger. Back then they spent about a trillion dollars from taxpayers. Here they already came up with six trillion. So you can feel that this will be sixfold bigger. This is clear theft of the wealth of the American people in broad daylight. As of yesterday, the report came out, another one and a half million people lost their jobs. So you have 44 million people, Americans, who have lost their jobs. We have to understand there are consequences for this. People who have lost their jobs, now they are running out of their government health checks and of their savings, and it's going to end up what? Their people will end up on the street. People will be hungry, will not have money to pay for medicine. And that's going to lead to more anger, more frustration, more demonstrations, more violence. So the government says, let's open up. Maybe we can soften the blow. That's not a solution. As a people, we have to ask ourselves, what is the solution? Is the government actually offering a solution? No, they're not. 
The problem between the races is a faith problem, is a belief in your heart. If somebody is born with the belief that they are superior, it needs an act of God to change their heart to start accepting other people. People of other religions or other colors or other ethnicities. So that is not something the government can legislate. And perhaps many people, you know, can see this, the rise of racism and how the president is, you know, fueling that fire. But that's nothing new. Past presidents were much worse. We'll talk about that in another time. But the question is, for all of us who want change to happen, and ask what is the change that we should do? We go back to our Prophet Muhammad who faced similar challenge in Mecca where people enslaved other people who were different. Like Bilal al-Habashi and Suhaib al-Rumi. It doesn't matter if you are black or white, in Mecca you become slave. If you are another Arab from another tribe or a Persian from a different empire, you will be enslaved. The poor were mistreated. The Prophet did not wage war and did not issue legislation and say this is how we solved it. But he immediately went to the heart and said, you start by believing in Allah, that he is the only one. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. You're not a God and I'm not a God. We are all the servants of God. We're all equal. But if you show a kid all his life, you take him to the church and you show him a white man as God on a cross. If you use language to demonize black people, anything that is, you know, evil or bad, we say it's black. Then what happens in the mind and the language of the average person Unconsciously, they become racist. But the Prophet ﷺ started by saying, change your iman, your faith, your belief system. Start there. Because you're not going to be truly free. It doesn't matter if you are white or black or yellow or red. You're not going to be free of what you have until you become a servant of Allah. Let me elaborate on this important point. Because many people think that white people are free. Many people think that Asians are free. It's just blacks were, no. Both the slave and the slave owner were both slaves to an ideology and a belief system that is totally wrong and anti-human. One was physically abused and victimized, but the, the person who is victimizing them is also not free. They are serving an ideology of hate, ideology of the shaitan. And Allah said, Ya Bani Adam, all children of Adam, didn't I tell you not to worship the shaitan? Alam aqul lakum alla ta'budu shaitan, innahu lakum aduwa mubin. We worship the shaitan, Satan, when we follow his beliefs, his ideology of superiority. I'm better than him.
Some people think because I don't believe in any religion, I'm free. No, you're not free. You are slave to your own desires. You worship your own self and your own desires. Did you see the one who took his own desire as his God? Freedom, total freedom, real freedom, is when you realize the fact that the creator of the universe, the creator of all people, is the only master, is the only God. There is no God but Allah. And Allah is not a man or a woman. He's not a human. He is not like us. But if you come from a religion that says we were created in the image of God and your thinking is God is a human, is a man, is an old man up there somewhere in the heaven, then you have reduced the creator to an image of yourself. So you worship another man. But the creator is not a human. The creator created humans created animals, created stars and planets and galaxies and black holes. He's not a human. We are a speck on this earth, and this earth is a speck in this solar system. And our solar system is a speck in our galaxy. And our galaxy is a speck in the universe. The creator of all of this is not a human, is not a man or a woman or anything close to that. So over the centuries and millennia, human beings reduced God to a person and worshipped him, made statues and idols and worshipped them. And many times, they worshipped living people, their leaders, their presidents, their kings, their emperors. And now the fashion is not to worship anybody, but worship me, myself, my ideas, my thoughts, my desires. What I think is right becomes right. What I think is wrong is wrong. As if there is no creator and ruler and legislator for this universe. So the fundamental problem is we have traded being servants of Allah, slaves of Allah, creatures that were created by Allah, to be servant and slaves to either our desires and ourselves or to other people, to other systems, to other ideologies that made us really poor slaves. When you become a Muslim, you free yourself from slavery to everything and everyone, and you turn only to the real Creator who created you. We create the human in the best form. That fundamental change is the approach of the prophets, all of the prophets. Allah said in Surah Al-Furqan, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُ We haven't sent a messenger, all the messengers from Adam to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hundreds of messengers to their people. All of them said the same thing. There is no God but one God, Allah, and that is who you worship who you follow his orders. Today, seven and a half billion humans, hardly any of them, except for few, who recognize this fact and who actually live by this fact. And I'm including a lot of Muslims 
who profess with their tongues the shahada, the declaration that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, but they don't live according to that. They live in the same system of being slaves of the dunya, slaves of each other, slaves of their leaders, slaves of their nationalism, slaves of their ethnic group and tribe. Whatever their tribe or leader says they go, they're willing to go and kill and destroy in that name. They don't follow the rules of the Quran. What Allah has declared for them to do and not to do, they don't follow the commandments that Allah revealed. They follow what their leaders were doing. In the time of Rasulullah a man came to Rasulullah who he was Christian, Christian Arab. And he heard this ayah, أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ They took their leaders, their pastors, and, and their priests and monks as gods beside Allah. Or instead of Allah. And he said, O Prophet of Allah, we didn't. So the Prophet said, didn't they order you to do what's wrong and you did it? He said, yes. Didn't they stop you from doing what's right and you followed what they said? He said, yes. He said, that's your worship. What is worship? If Allah is telling you unite as people and you follow the designs of the shaitan to be divided, then you are following the shaitan, not following the orders of Allah. If the Prophet is telling you, if Allah is telling you, love each other, and you still hate each other, who are you following, Allah, or you're following your desire? So that is the fundamental problem in this country and around the world today. And nothing is going to change until we actually change our faith, our heart. As Muslims, we have to re-examine our views and our life and our behavior based on the Quran as our measuring stick. So we can be consistent with the orders of the Quran, the commandments of Allah, and the instructions and guidance of his prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's how we know if we are on the right track or not. So the Prophet spent years educating the people how to change their hearts. How to stop seeing people as less than them or better than them. To see them as just fellow humans who are equal to them. To treat them as their brothers. And he said, one of you doesn't believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. That's how he summarized Islam. You're not a Muslim. You're not a believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And that brother is anyone, any human, not just a Muslim. You want life. You want peace. You want safety. You want prosperity then you have to want that for everybody else. You have to work hard and compete in doing good. So with that, we understand the problem that we are witnessing with our own eyes. That has been going on for centuries. And different administrations came and gone, and laws have been passed. And, but really? Nothing has changed. What the people were doing in the 60s, in the 1960s, is happening right now. It's just we put a Band-Aid on it and think it's going to work and hope, and 10 and 20 years pass and we see nothing changed. And nothing will change until we change ourselves. Allah said in Surah Al-Ra'd, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what's in themselves. What it's referring to is change your heart, change your belief. 
until you become a truly servant of Allah, one and only, where then you free yourself from the biases, the racism. It doesn't matter if you are the one who is applying it or receiving it. It doesn't matter if you are white or black. There are whites who are racist, and there are blacks who are racist too. There are Arabs who are racist. There are Muslims who are racist. And those really are not compatible. If you are a mu'min, a believer, you cannot be racist, and you cannot be hater, because that negates your faith in Allah. Because then you commit shirk, that you and Allah are better than the rest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide this nation and this world to the beautiful, simple message of Islam. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على خير البشر نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا I want to reiterate that my humble advice to you is to practice safety measures of distancing, physical distancing, of wearing masks, of washing your hands, of being careful around people who uh, are exposed to the disease because things are much worse today than they were three months ago. Okay? Don't relax. Make it part of your routine. Practice it for your own safety and the safety of other people. And for that reason, I would say, don't just follow the noise and the crowds and say, we need to protest and we need to go out and do think. Is your action going to actually make a difference or not? I want to give you an example of one person, Malcolm X. Malcolm had a very troubled youth. He went to jail. He, he had so many problems until he found Islam. And he had very racist views, even though he was black and he was the victim of racism. But if you asked him before Islam, what's his views and in his early years in Islam, when he was part of the nation of Islam, he would think of white people as devils. He hates people who are different than him. Until he was invited by some Muslims, and look at the action of one Muslim, a brother from Sudan, who met him in New York and said, I disagree with you. I'm real African from Sudan. But you are racist too. He said, I want you to go for Hajj. He arranged for him to go for Hajj. And there he met German Muslims, blonde hair, blue eyes. He met Muslims who are white and black and yellow and all kinds of races. And everybody during Hajj expressed a real brotherhood that he never seen this in America. It transformed him from the core that he understood what's wrong with him, let alone with the people who were abusing him and his people. And he came back as a changed man and began that process. And he changed his name. He adopted a new name because he realized that the name he was given wasn't his real name. That was a slave name that he inherited. 
So he chose a beautiful name for himself, Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz. And today, when I look at my African-American brothers who are running around frustrated and want change, I say, change your faith like Malcolm did, and change your name like Malcolm did, and adopt your real identity. Be proud of who you are, who Allah created you to be. And then you will see your world is changing. Because Allah said you're not going to change your world until you change yourself. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to be like that Sudanese brother who reached to Malcolm and showed him the way and transformed not just one person, but transformed the whole nation with him. Each one of you comes in contact every day with people who don't know much about Islam, who are frustrated and looking for an answer. And the answer is not in a small piece of legislation or defunding the police or doing this or that. It is we as humans have to change who we are and realize what we have been doing is wrong. Through Islam, Allah united millions of people, not just the Arab tribes, but all the ethnic groups from Morocco in the West to India and China in the East. They all entered into one global human brotherhood. And that is the most impressive thing in history that happened, creating a worldwide brotherhood of nations and peoples who are equal in the sight of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to lead the way. We have to be role models and inspire others rather than follow their designs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring to a good end this pandemic and help many people to wake up and return to their creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure those who are sick and be merciful to those who passed away. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما